Now notice that for every pair of complex numbers, Z1 and Z2, there exist unique complex numbers X and Y, such that Z1 star prime X gives Z2, and Y star prime Z sub 1 gives Z sub 2, namely, X equals Y, since the uh, operation is commutative, and this is the conjugate of Z sub 2 times the reciprocal of Z sub 1. And hence, the complex numbers, together with the binary operation star prime, is a quasi-group. Also notice that for every complex number z, z star prime, the conjugate of z over z, is the same as the conjugate of z over z star prime z, which gives z. However, this number depends upon the given complex number z, and so there does not exist a complex number E such that for every complex number Z we have that E star prime Z is the same as Z star prime E which gives Z and hence the structure consisting of the complex numbers together with this binary operation star prime is not a loop But we have demonstrated that the complex numbers together with this binary operation star prime is a commutative quasi-group. But is neither a semi-group nor a loop. All right. So a new definition. Let the set G together with some binary operation star be a group. The commutator of two elements, A and B in the set G is the element which we denote using square brackets A comma B and this is the product of A or rather A star B star A inverse star B inverse and as you might suspect, the uh, commutator is an indication uh, as to the degree of the uh, commutativity of the elements. So we will now prove a theorem. Let G, together with the binary operation star, be a group with identity E. Then, the, for every pair of elements, A and B, in the group, the commutator of A and B is the identity, if and only if, A star B is equal to B star A. So, proof. Suppose that the commutator of the elements A and B is identity, then we have that A star B star A inverse star B inverse is equal to identity. A inverse star B inverse 
is the same as the inverse of b star a. And so we can multiply, or rather perform the operation star on both sides with b star a, so that we have a star b is equal to b star a. So conversely, suppose that a star b is equal to b star a, then the commutator of a and b is once again a star b star a inverse star b inverse. Now as a star b is the same as b star a, we have b star a star a inverse star b inverse, which is b star identity star b inverse, which is b star b inverse which is identity. Therefore, the commutator of A and B is the group identity if and only if the elements are commuted or that the elements commute. All right, new definition. Let the set G, together with the binary operation star, be a group if the cardinality of the set G is the number N for some positive integer N. Then the group G is called a finite group of order n. Finite group. Of order n. So in the definition, let G together with the binary operation star, where G is the set consisting of the elements G sub 1 through G sub n, be a finite group of order n with identity. The first element, g sub 1, the Cayley table for the group is the n by n matrix whose entry in row I, column J, is G sub I star G sub J. A Cayley table is sometimes called the multiplication table or group table for the group More generally, we can form the Cayley table for any monoid 
or loop. And by convention, a Cayley table. always begins with the identity element. The uh, Cayley table is named in honor of the British mathematician author Cayley. So let's look at an example. We're going to construct and compare the Cayley tables for the fourth roots of unity under multiplication and the integers modulo 4 under addition. So for the fourth roots of unity, we have 1, i, negative 1, negative i. Now, strictly speaking, the Cayley table is the matrix of the products, but for convenience, we're going to add a row and a column uh, with the factors. So let's fill in this table. 1 times any element is that element. So. Yeah. 1i, negative 1, negative i. i times i is negative 1. i times negative 1 is negative i. And i times negative i is 1. Negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. Negative 1 times negative i is i. And negative i times negative i is negative 1. So let's rename these elements G1 through G4. And let's reproduce this table. So on the first row of the Cayley table, we have G1, G2, G3, G4. On the second row, we have G2, G3, G4, G1. On the third row, we have G3, G4, G1, G2. And on the uh, last row, we have G4, G1, G2, and G3. So now let's construct the table for the uh, integers modulo 4. Those elements are 0, 1, 2, and 3. 0 plus any number is that number. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3. 1 times 1 is 2. 1 times 2 is 3. And 1, or rather, 1 plus 1 is 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. And 1 plus 3, modulo 4, is 0. 2 plus 2 modulo 4 is 0. And 2 plus 3 modulo 4 is 1. And 3 plus 3 modulo 4 is 2. So notice that if we rename the elements G1 through G4, that we have the same table. That is, the table for uh, the uh, integers modulo 4 under addition is identical to the table for uh, multiplication for the uh, fourth roots of unity. So again the tables are identical for the two structures. identical K 
Kaylee Tables. For finite groups, indicate that the groups are isomorphic to one another. And we already know that the integers modulo 4 under addition is isomorphic to the fourth roots of unity under multiplication. In addition, symmetry about the main diagonal indicates that the group is abelian since there is symmetry about the main diagonal if and only if g sub i star g sub j is equal to g sub j star g sub i. So a Cayley table for a finite group can tell us uh, quite a lot at a glance about the structure of the group. Uh, for instance, we can see at a glance that the operation is closed. We can also see at a glance that there is an identity element. And we can see that each element has an inverse. And if we look at the uh, main diagonal, because we have symmetry across the main diagonal, we know that the operation is uh, commutative. Now, the only thing that a Cayley table does not show is whether or not the operation is associative. And once again, if two uh, structures have the same Cayley table, then they are isomorphic to one another. So if given a Cayley table for a structure, uh, if we see that that structure is closed under a given operation, that there is an identity element and that each element has an inverse, then we can uh, demonstrate that it is a group by showing that uh, its Cayley table is identical to the Cayley table of a known group. Since if two Cayley tables are identical, then the two structures are isomorphic.